We've rolled out the first of its kind at Rose Hill and Ramwick, 150 metres of LED along the main straights. Theatre of the Horse, um, LED, we've got interactive cubes um, and a technology platform which integrates um, to, uh, to do full takeovers and a real opportunity for our sponsors and um, um, to really enhance that sort of fan experience when, when people are at the track. Yeah, well we're getting more and more people at the track now and when you talk about the LEDs, it's really interesting some of the content like the horse physiology and you get jockey bios, so people that come and as we get more and more and we hopefully sometime soon we'll have a full track but it really adds doesn't it we certainly have a bit of fun with it and, and that content's really important around live stats um, we can do all sorts of interesting things horse hearts rates jockeys profile we can do speed of horses along the main straight um, so really interesting facts which will um, you know enhance that sort of fan experience but also a great opportunity working with our partners it's a really interesting way for them to now advertise um, and market their brands in a real innovative way rather than just have a, a static sign that um, sort of sits there and doesn't do too much. The richest race on turf, the Everest of course in mid-October, that's where this show is moving towards Racing Dreams, the Everest and, and what we've got here with this new technology just lifts that whole experience for, yeah. the, for the people that are here and, and even at home. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with limited crowds, we've certainly got to think of different ways to entertain people here at the races. Technology is just, just one of those forms. Working with Racing New South Wales on the, on the way to Everest, there's some really sort of keen sponsors and, and, and Racing New South Wales and how we're going to get involved and, and how we're going to make it a, an enjoyable experience for when people are here at the track. It's certainly been a time where we all had to be nimble and agile and at 100 odd kilos. It hasn't always been that easy, Piers, <laughs> but uh, you, you've had to be in, in an executive role with, with your organisation as well. Yeah, we sort of, um, you know, pinned the ears back, so to speak, and, and just got on with the job and, and we've raced the whole way through COVID um, and we've, you know, we've we're still deploying major infrastructure projects like this. So we've, we've been fortunate, you know, it is difficult, challenging times out there, but as a club we sort of continue with the support of our members and, and partners to um, to really put on racing and showcase it in the best way possible. Yeah, it's an exciting future, it's a great history, the Australian Turf Club, but a real exciting future for everyone that loves this sport. Absolutely, it, yeah, it's, um, and, and coming into spring, you know, the excitement starts to come, being back at the track today, um, seeing more people here, obviously we're sort of um, under strict guidelines around through the public health orders and, and COVID and we're working towards that, um, building up to a, um, what we think will be a, another great and successful spring carnival. Finally, I could see what would look absolutely beautiful. Come down again, Joe. Could you, could you imagine racing dreams along one of those? That'd be absolutely sensational. You probably need Julie rather than me because I'll destroy it, but that'd look nice, Piers. Well, anything's doable, Tim. You know, we can. Um, we certainly come to the price, though. You know, but I'm, I'm certainly we can talk and, and negotiate an outcome there.